Good afternoon, everyone. Apologies for being a little bit late. Um, I was just struggling to log on to Blackboard for some reason. Can you all hear me? Okay, thank you. I'm just going to open up the question quickly. Okay, can you all see the question? Uh, it's the wrong one. Let me just try and get to the other one. Okay, sorry about that. So this is the correct question that you should have um, done already. It was loaded on Ulink. Okay, so this is the question we're going to be looking at today. And for those people that were in the class this morning as well, I did mention that um, preparing journal entries and preparing the actual PPE note, um, which is the PPE reconciliation note or the disclosure for PPE, is very important for the test and the exam. I mentioned that the test is going to cover both unit one and um, unit two. Because we spend more time on unit two, obviously the test covers a lot more work from unit two. Okay, so you can expect that um, about 80% of your test is PPE. Okay, and the test is on uh, the 20, 24th of March. So that's when you're gonna be writing, okay, which is exactly two weeks from now. So please start preparing for the test, okay. So let's go to this question here. We're gonna start by looking at the required, because when you get a question, so just some exam technique as I go along, just gonna share some exam technique with you guys as well. So the first thing that you should do is go, um, go to the required. I'm gonna try and zoom in more. Okay. So next week, we don't have um, a topic we're going to do. So you can check in the study guide. We are going to be doing revision for the theory class, but we still need to do um, the last practical question in the practical class. Okay. So you'll have a normal practical class, but in the theory class, we're going to be looking at some revision. Okay. So if we look at the required, the first number one says that we need to prepare all the journal entries. Okay, so journal entries is what we need to do related to what? To land and to vehicles. Okay. For the company, for the period ending 30th of June, 2016. The dates when it comes to PPE is very important. Please make sure you understand 
how to do a timeline, okay, and to draw a timeline. So look at the dates carefully and make sure that you get the dates correct. Sometimes if you get the dates wrong, all your calculations are wrong. So please look at the dates carefully. And then it says journal narrations are not required, so please don't do what is required. Obviously, there's no marks for that, so don't um, waste your time doing that, okay? And then the second part of the question is to prepare the PPE note. Okay, so this is very important to prepare the PPE note to the financial statements again, 30th of June, 2016. Comparatives are not required, so we're only going to be doing it for the year end 2016. Okay, so let's quickly just speak about. Um, okay, so this is how we would normally test a question like this here in a normal environment or face-to-face -face test environment. In an online environment, it is different, but the learning outcomes are still the same. So we could still ask you for journal entries, but we're not gonna ask you for 11 marks to do all the journal entries. We would, for example, break it down into smaller questions. So you would need to do the journal maybe for the acquisition, the journal for the disposal, and so on, so that we could mark it or the system can mark it as well. There will be a portion of multiple choice word false questions, and it's also going to be questions where you need to type out the answers. You need to choose the correct answer. So you still need to be able to prepare and to do your calculations. Okay. There might also be a place for you to write out your answers um, or show your calculations because we're going to be awarding marks for that. So just because we are in an online environment, please don't expect that you're just going to be getting multiple choice questions. You still need to type out your answers, do discussions, do journal entries, do PPE notes, etc. Okay. So that's what we need to do. We need to firstly do the journal entries for land and for vehicle. So that's our starting point. We're going to focus on these two things, on land and on vehicles. Okay. So as we go through the question, okay, it says that this company, Tomati Logistics, is in the business of producing or transporting fresh produce. Their financial year end is 30th of June. They give us the balances for PPE on what date? 30th of June 2015. So what does this represent? Remember, the year end we just saw now, just now in the required is 30th of June 2015. 16. So that is our year in. The dates that they gave us now, the information ad is the 30th of June 2015. So what do these represent? They are my opening balances or the balances at the beginning of the financial year. Okay. So that's very important to note. They gave me the balances at the beginning of the financial year, and I'm definitely going to use these balances to do my calculations. Any questions? Okay, so we're going to look at land first. So they said we need to do it for land and for vehicles. So if we look at land, we can see that the cost price is 30 million. There's no accumulated depreciation and the carrying value is 30 million. Why would there be no accumulated depreciation for land? Okay, land does not have depreciation, that is correct. So land is never depreciated, okay. So they, you should never find depreciation in land and you should never try and calculate it as well. Let's go to the additional information. So it says the company uses the cost model. Remember that I, with this morning we spoke about in the lecture, you have a choice. You can either use the cost model or the revaluation model. Here they are using the cost model, okay? So you don't have to worry about any revaluations or fair value. We are just using the cost model. That's the first thing you should look at. In every category, what model are they using? Here we are using the cost model. So please don't do any revaluations in this question. They say they then say, oh sorry for land, don't do any revaluations for land. In June 2016, okay, so that is the financial year in, the value in use of the land was 24.5 million. 
And the fair value, less cost to sell, was 23 million. Okay, so here you might get confused and you might think, why are they giving me the fair value, but I'm using the cost model? Please work with what they tell you. They say it's the cost model, so you should never do a revaluation, even if a fair value is given to you. There's another reason that they have given me this fair value, less cost to sell. Who can tell me what is this here? What comes to your mind? Why would they give you this value here? Good, impairment, okay, so there should be a light bulb moment, okay, you should think, they are giving me these two things, where, do I, where did I see this before? I saw it when I'm doing an impairment calculation, okay, so that should come to your mind. Right, so let's quickly recap on impairments, okay, when we are doing an impairment calculation, we need to calculate what they call a recoverable amount, okay. And a recoverable amount is what? How do we calculate the recoverable amount? Okay. The recoverable amount is equal to the higher of what? Okay, it's the higher of these two here. The first one, the value in use, and the second one, the fair value, less cost to sell. So you need to look at these two values here and see which one is the higher amount, okay? Sometimes they might give you the fair value and the cost to sell separately, and then you need to say what is the fair value, less cost to sell. Here they gave you the, the, uh, the amount minus the cost of sale already, and it's 23 million. Okay, so looking at these two here, we need to determine which is the higher of the two. So which is the higher? Is it the value in use, or is it the fair value less cost to sell? Okay, you can see that the fair value less cost, is, less cost to sell is 23 million. The value in use is 24.5 million. So this is definitely the higher of the two. Okay. So therefore, I need to make a note in my solution. We'll get a mark for that and say, I looked at the two of them. I saw that the value in use is higher and therefore 24.5 million is my recoverable amount. Okay, how do you then calculate impairment? You will then calculate impairment by saying that Impairment is equal to my carrying value minus my recoverable amount. Okay, correct, good. My carrying value of this asset is how much? What is the carrying value of the land? Okay, remember, you gave me the amount, it's 30 million. There is no depreciation for land, so the carrying value at the beginning of the year is gonna be the same carrying value at the end of the year, okay? So the carrying value of my land is this 30 million. Okay, and the recoverable amount we said is the 24.5 million. Okay, so therefore, payment loss will be the difference between the two, which is 5.5 million, okay. So I think that most students are quite comfortable with doing any payment calculation. They find it difficult to identify any payment. So sometimes they don't identify the impairment and then they don't know they need to do any payment calculation. So my advice to you is the moment the question speaks about something getting damaged or a competitor bringing out something in the market, Okay, or the moment they just give you the fair value, cost to sell, value in use, or they speak of a recoverable amount, all of those are signs that actually there's an impairment in this question. Okay, so look out for those things there. All of those should be your light bulb moments to think that actually I need to do payment calculation. Okay, yes, you can ask a question. Uh, Ma'am, I'm very, very curious. Yes. 
Yes. So I am of the assumption that land and building, physically building, does not depreciate, but instead appreciates with time. Uh, I know yes. that now we're doing impairment, but yes, ma'am. So with impairment on land, what are the examples or instances where we would find that land is impaired? Okay, so it depends on, um, yeah, like an example I can think of, it will depend on the situation or what type of land it is, but maybe it's, it might be the area. So sometimes it might be that when you buy a land, let's say um, two or three years ago, uh, it might be a very good area. Okay, there's good schools there, um, or it might be good for business purposes. And then, for example, like the CBD, like town, a few years ago, the value of the property was very high. Now the value of the property is not the same anymore. So things change over time. Sometimes um, the, the area is not a good area anymore, and that's why there could be a possible impairment. Uh, okay, ma'am, and then would maybe, for example, if this land was used for farming purposes, maybe if the land was no longer, I don't know, if this was no longer fertile, would that be considered as an impairment to the land? Yes, yes, it could be. So uh, obviously you need to look at the financial effect of it. Okay, so if that it's no longer fertile land, fertile land obviously you're not going to get the same price if you intend to sell it, etc. And um, you won't be able to grow anything on it. So that could also be an indicator of impairment. Okay, thank you. Um, so I'm not sure how else to clear up the screen. From my side, it looks fine. Is everyone else struggling to see the screen? It is zoomed in. Okay, I'm gonna try and so should I zoom in or zoom out? Because I think that um, okay, zoom in, okay, because if I the, I think the more you zoom in, um, it becomes more blur, but I'm gonna try. Okay, can you see now? Okay, so I think that the biggest that I zoom it in. Let me just see. Okay, yeah. Okay, and then some people are also saying that the student should also zoom in. Okay, so this is the biggest I can zoom in so that everything, all the information is here. Okay, and then you must also zoom in from your side as well. Okay, so how do you zoom in? You should have a button right on the top here with a magnifying glass on a page. And if you just click on that, it will open up all of this. And the plus one is to zoom in, the minus is to zoom out. Okay. Okay. Okay, so that is the impairment calculation. Um, is there any more questions on the impairment calculation? Okay, but remember we didn't yet answer the required. So the required asks us that what is the journal entry for the impairment for the land? So what is the journal entry for the impairment? Okay, we're gonna debit an impairment loss. Okay. Remember that in your journal, you need to indicate which statement it's affecting. So this is going to affect profit and loss. Okay, and you're going to credit accumulated impairment. And this is going to affect my statement of financial position. Okay. Okay, and the amount we calculated is 5.5 million. Okay. Any questions? Okay, so I think that's the easiest part of this question, yeah?
Okay, the next thing that we need to look at is the vehicles. Okay, so please read through the information on the vehicle so long. It's on the next page. Okay. okay. Okay, then also one more thing I want to just mention, so some exam technique. If the question doesn't mention anything, so here you'll see they don't mention anything about a cost model or a revaluation model, you will assume that it's the cost model, okay? If it's a revaluation model, we have to tell you specifically that actually we are using the revaluation model. Okay. In this case, yeah, they don't mention anything. So yeah, we are also using the cost model. Okay. They say that vehicles are depreciated at 20% on the straight line method. So zero residual value. So all of that information is important. I'm gonna use 20%, I'm gonna use the straight line method, and there's zero residual value. Okay. Then it says two trucks, which were both acquired on the 1st of November, 2013, for 500,000 rand each, were disposed of on 30th of April, 2016. Okay, so this is where your timeline becomes important. So you're gonna draw your timeline. Okay, you always start with your year end. Our year end is 30th of June 2016. When did we buy this asset? We bought it on first of November. Twenty thirteen. Okay. So if you look at it, okay, our first year end after we bought this asset would have been June 2013. Okay, so for the year ended 30th of June 2013, we would have only depreciated that asset from the 1st of November until uh, 30th of June. So that would be November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June. Okay, so how many months would that be? Count your fingers. So it's going to be November, December, January, February, March, April, May, and June. Okay, so that's actually eight. Okay, and then for the year end of 2014, we would depreciate it, this asset for the full year, so that would be 12 months. Then our next year end is June 2015. Okay, again, that would be for the full 12 months. Oh, so sorry, okay, okay, sorry guys. Okay, so this is actually June 2014. Okay, and this is June 2015, and this year doesn't exist there. Okay, so we actually have one year, so the year starts on the 1st of July 2013, it would end on 30th of June 2014, and we counted the eight months in that year. In the year ended 30th of June 2015, we depreciate for the full year. And then the asset was sold on the 30th of April. Let me get another color. Okay, the asset was sold on the 30th of April 2016. So that would be summer year. I have a question. You can ask a question. Okay, so the asset was sold on the 30th of April, 2016. 
So for that year, how long would we use that asset for? Okay, 10 months. So you're going to count from July 2015. It would be July 2015, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, and April. And that would equal to 10 months. Okay, good. So in the first year, when we bought the asset, we used it for eight months. In the second year, we used it for um, one full year, okay? And then in the last year, we would have used the asset for 10 months. Any questions? Okay, then they give us how much they sold the trucks for. So they sold it for 600,000 in total. Please be careful of things like this, yeah? So this is um, so that you can get confused, okay? Just to see, are you paying attention or not? So they gave you the, the purchase price of the trucks, it's 500,000 each, okay? So that means that for two trucks, the cost would be 1 million rand, okay? When we sell it, we sell it together for 600,000 in total, so it would be 300,000 each, okay? So just be careful when you're doing your calculations, you take that into account. They also then say that the depreciation for vehicles was correctly calculated um, as 2.633 million for the year ended the year of June 2016, okay? So if they give you something, there's no need for you to go and recalculate it. That's how it is done, okay? Okay, so please do the calculations for me for the depreciation of um, the vehicles you sold for the current year as well as the profit or loss. Okay. So, um, if we look at it, okay, basically, in order to calculate a profit or loss on disposal, okay, remember that. Um, okay, can you all hear me now? was having some trouble to put my mic on. Okay, so profit or loss is basically your proceeds minus getting value. Can you guys hear me? Okay, great. Okay, thank you. Okay, so my proceeds are given to me. It's 600,000. 
Okay, and now I need to determine my carrying value. That's why I asked you to calculate um, the depreciation for that asset. Okay, so in the first year, we would depreciate those assets for eight months. So your depreciation calculation should be the 1 million rand, which is the cost price of the assets. Okay, somebody's uh, microphone is on. Please just mute your microphone. Okay, so in the first year, on the 30th of June, 2014, you're gonna take the 1 million rand. Okay, you're gonna multiply it by your depreciation rate, which is given to me 20%. Okay, and then you're gonna multiply it by eight over 12. Okay, so in the first year, The depreciation calculation is like that. Okay, and your answer will be 133,333. Okay, so there's your depreciation calculation. I put it in the chat. So in the first year, ended 30th of June 2014, you're going to take the cost price of 1 million. Remember, it's 500,000 each, and there's two trucks. So we say 500,000 times two, that's how I get the 1 million times the depreciation rate, 20%, and multiplied by eight over 12. We calculated the months together just now from 1st of November, 2013 to 30th of June, 2014 is eight months. Have any questions on that? Okay, then for the year ended 30th of June, 2015, we depreciate in it for the whole year. Okay, so my calculation is going to be 1 million times 20%, and it's for the full year, so there's no need to apportion. And the answer to that is 200,000. Any questions? Okay, then in year three, for the year ended 30th of June 2016, we only depreciate until the date the asset is sold. Okay, and what is the date the asset is sold? It's sold on the 30th of April. 2016. Okay, so we counted from the 1st of July 2015 until 30th of April 2016. It's eight months. So we take our 1 million, year three depreciation, we take the 1 million times 20% times 10 divided by 12. Okay, and what is that going to give you? Okay, 166,667. Okay, if we add all of those depreciation together, okay, so year one depreciation plus year two plus year three, and that's going to equal to your accumulated depreciation. That's going to give you accumulated depreciation of 500,000. Did you all get that? Okay, so it would be in the first year, 133333 plus the 200,000 plus the 166667. Okay, any questions? Okay, and therefore the carrying value of the asset would be my cost minus accumulated depreciation. And the carrying value would be the cost of 1 million 
minus the accumulated depreciation we just calculated of 500,000. So getting value is going to equal to 500,000. Okay, and then if we look at whether we made a profit or a loss, so here we said that our proceeds is 600,000, our carrying value of these two trucks is 500,000, so this is a five. Okay, that would mean that we made our proceeds is more, we made a profit of 100,000 rand. Okay. Okay, so my, the question is, what about the 2633 mentioned in the calculation? So that is the depreciation for all the vehicles. Remember that if I go back to the first page, okay, they gave me the opening balances on vehicles. Okay, so they, my, all my vehicles all together have a cost of 15 million accumulated depreciation of six and carrying value of nine million. Okay, so I didn't sell all of my vehicles. I only sold two trucks. So the depreciation that they gave me here, okay, this 2.63 million, that is the depreciation for all the vehicles for the year. And it would also include that depreciation we just calculated of um, the two trucks that we sold um, the one six 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 seven. Okay, so this amount here, two six three 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 three, includes that amount there of one six 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 seven. The reason we needed to calculate for that one separately is because we want to know what is the carrying value of the trucks that we sold. Does that answer your question? Okay, good. Um, okay, so now let's do the journal entries. Okay, so remember we haven't yet answered the question. So the question is, what is the journal entry for this transaction here? So for vehicles. Okay, so what journal entries do you think we're going to do for vehicles? Anyone want to try? Okay, I mentioned this morning in the class when we looked at disposals, I said that whenever you have a disposal of an asset, there's always four elements that you must have in your journal entry. And I want to see that from all of you guys going forward, whenever there's a disposal, you should have four elements. So you're not just going to say, debit bank, credit vehicles, or credit trucks, that's wrong. You should always have four things in your entry. What are those four things? So you're going to debit your accumulated depreciation. Okay, because remember, accumulated depreciation, we are taking out the asset from our books, so we're taking out the accumulated depreciation as well. We're going to take it out at... Um, the total accumulated depreciation, and we calculated that to be 500,000. Okay, then we're going to credit our asset, our trucks, okay, and that would be at the cost price of 1 million. Okay, we also need to debit our bank because we're receiving proceeds, we're receiving how much? We're receiving 600,000, okay? So we're gonna debit bank with 600,000. And we just calculated together that there's a profit on disposal, so we need to credit our profit on disposal of 100,000. Okay. So this cost of asset is 1 million. Okay, so we debit in accumulated depreciation, 5,000, debit in bank with the proceeds, 600, 
We created the asset or the motor vehicles or the trucks, one million, and we created profit on disposal, 100,000. Okay, if there was a loss on disposal, then you need to debit your loss on disposal. Okay. Okay, so please look at this journal entry very carefully. I'm just quickly looking at some of the responses in the chat, okay? And you need to have your journal like this. So remember, whenever there's a disposal, you need to have four elements in your journal entry. The accumulated depreciation, the cost price of the asset, your proceeds, and your profit and your loss, okay? So all of those must be included in your journal entries. Okay, where does the profit to loss go? The profit to loss goes to um, your other income in your statement of profit to loss. Okay, so it doesn't go to property, it goes to statement of profit to loss. Okay, so remember also to include all of your elements in your financial statements here. So accumulated depreciation will affect statement of financial position, bank, statement of financial position, the asset, statement of financial position, and the profit or loss will affect ASPL. Okay, any questions? Are we done with vehicles then? Do you think there's any other journal entries we need to do for vehicles? Okay, so SPL is a statement of the last statement of changes in equity is OCE, statement of changes in equity. Okay, so yes, the, the other journal that we need to do is this 2.63 million, the depreciation for all of the other vehicles. Okay, so we need to debit depreciation. So this is an easy journal, which you're going to get two marks for. Please don't leave out the easy stuff, okay? So I'm gonna debit depreciation, this equals to profit or loss. For me, I don't mind if you call it profit or loss or SPL or whatever it is, as long as we can see it goes to your profit or loss, okay? And for your statement of financial position, as long as we can see is it SFP or SOFP, as long as we can see it's going to your statement of financial position. The amount is the 2.633 million. Okay, um, Okay. so Lita Hong, Lita Kong, I'm not sure what's your question because you're saying isn't the SSPL consisting of all the balances for the accounts in the equity part of the account integration? Um, so when we're talking about these things here, we're not talking of the account integration, we are speaking about um, statement of what financial statement is affecting. So remember your financial statements consists of the statement of financial position, the statement of profit or loss, and your statement of changes in equity. Okay, so your statement of financial position normally has all of your assets and your liabilities, and uh, your statement of profit or loss normally includes all your incomes and your expenses, and in your statement of changes in equity, that's where you have all your equity items with the opening balances, what happened during the year. So that would be like share capital, share premium, all of those things. Okay, we don't need to subtract the 500,000 from the 2.6 million because remember that um, they're not asking us to do the note or anything. All they're asking us is to do the job. That depreciation of the vehicles that we sold is included in that amount already. So there's no need to do any calculations there. If we are doing the note, then we would need to take that into account. 
which we're going to do just now in part two of the question. Okay. So that is basically part one of the question. Okay. We've done the journal entries for both land and for vehicles. Okay. Next, we need to do the property plant and equipment note for 30th of June 2016. So I think that we're going to start off with um, the, the two um, categories we already started off with, so land and vehicles, because we've just done it and it's fresh in our minds. So let's start with land. Okay, I'm just going to open up a blank piece of paper here. Just give me a second. Okay, so when you are doing your PPE note, the way that it works is that you would have your columns, whatever it might be. Okay, so we're going to start off with land here. Okay, you always start with your opening balances. So your opening balances is for the year before, so it would be 30th of June 2015. Okay, so these are my opening balances, and then you have your cost, your accumulated depreciation. Okay, so obviously you need to write it out in full. I'm just writing it out in short for you. Okay, and then you would have your movements for the year. So whatever happened during the year, okay. In your movements for the year, that's where you show what happened, okay. Was there additions? Was there disposals? Was there impairment? Whatever happened during the year, okay. So for land specifically, we had an impairment. You all remember we had an impairment. For land, we calculated it together. So that is the movement we have for land. Okay. Okay, so the depreciation for the 10 months in 2016, the 166667, it's included in that 2.66 million, okay. So there's no need for us to now do that depreciation again. Because if we read in the question, it says that that 2.633 million is the correct amount for depreciation for all your vehicles. Okay, so it, it's already included there. There's no need to do another journal for that amount there. Okay. Okay, so land is quite easy because remember there's no depreciation on land. So, okay, yes, you can ask a question. Shabango? Okay, so for land, so this is obviously supposed to be in millions, okay, so for land, the cost is 30 million. There was no accumulated depreciation. The carrying value is 30 million. Then we had an impairment for the year. Remember that your impairment must be shown in brackets, okay? So don't forget to show your impairment in brackets, okay? The impairment, we calculated it as 5.5 million, okay? And it must be shown in brackets. If it's not shown in brackets, you're not going to be getting a mark for it. Okay, so please remember to show your impairment in brackets because it's decreasing the value of my asset. Okay. And then at the end of your note, you would have your balances at the year end. So at 30th of June. Twenty sixteen. Okay, what is my cost? The cost is going to be my thirty million. Okay, accumulated depreciation is nothing, but we do have accumulated impairments.
okay, of 5.5 million, and remember that that must be in brackets. And that's going to give me a carrying value. of 24.5 million. Any questions on the land note or the land PPE column? Okay, hey, now let's look at vehicles. Okay, so again, we're gonna start off with the opening balances and in this question here, the opening balances are given to you. So you just simply have to copy it in your solution. Okay, so the cost price is 15 million, please. Let me know if you're unsure where I'm getting some amount from and stop me. Accumulated depreciation is 6 million. This all comes from the question. Okay. Unfortunately, I can't go between the two of them because the moment I go back to the question, all of my work in here, all my writing is going to go away. Okay. And that will give me a carrying value of 9 million. Okay, it doesn't matter to me if you show your carrying value on the top or at the bottom. Okay, as long as we can see, it's clear that you have a carrying value. Okay, so you can even show the carrying value on the top, it's fine. Okay, then what happened to vehicles during the year? Why is there any additions? Why is there any impairment? Why is there any revaluation? Okay. No, but what did we have? We had a disposal. Okay, so a sale of my vehicles. What's very important here, so I'm going to put it in red because a lot of students actually get this wrong. When you show your disposal in your PPE note, it must be at the getting value. Okay. So the carrying value of the trucks that we sold, and again, the, carrying, the disposal must be shown in brackets. Um, okay. Okay, so the disposal, okay, so this is a bracket, I'm not sure why it's not coming like round. Okay. So the disposal is 500,000, okay? Remember the disposal must be at carrying value. So we don't show the disposal at the cost price, we show the disposal at carrying value. Any questions on that? Yes. Ma'am, I'd, um, I'd like to ask, why do we show the disposal at carrying value, but any, when we do general entries, we dispose the vehicles at cost. Okay, so remember when we do in our general entry, I just mentioned to you now that there's four elements. You need to take the cost, your accumulated depreciation, then you show your proceeds, and then you show your profit or your loss. Okay, so actually, we are taking into account both the cost and the accumulated depreciation. Because when we're taking out those trucks or books, we're not just taking out the cost, we are taking out the accumulated depreciation as well. So in our journal, when we say credit the trucks and we also say debit accumulated depreciation, we're taking out both the cost as well as the accumulated depreciation. Does that make sense?
Yes, so it's the cost minus the accumulated depreciation. The cost is 1 million, accumulated depreciation is 500, and the carrying value is 500,000. Okay, if we look at our closing balances, so you will see uh, that we actually take in both into account. So the cost of my trucks at the beginning of the year okay, was 15 million. Then I sold the trucks worth one million. Okay, so that means that at the end of the year, I only have trucks worth 14 million. I started off with the 15 million at the beginning of the year. Okay, and then I sold for one million, and that's how I get 14 million. So at the beginning of the year, I had 15 million. And remember, I sold those two trucks there. Those the cost of those two trucks were one million. So therefore, the cost at the end of the year is 14 million, okay? And then I'm gonna come to the accumulated depreciation and the impairment, and then the carrying value. So yes, I'm coming back to the depreciation. I just wanted to show you um, that when you're doing a disposal, your cost must be reduced by the asset that you sold. Okay, so thank you for the reminder as well. Okay, and then we're gonna show depreciation here. Okay, so depreciation for your vehicles, luckily we didn't have to calculate it, it was given to us. So by just putting in, put it, putting, putting it in here, and by putting it in brackets, Okay, we're gonna get a mark for that, okay. Okay, so 2.633 million. Questions? Okay, then your accumulated depreciation and impairment. So this here is both accumulated depreciation as well as impairment. Okay, at the beginning of the year, we had accumulated depreciation of six million. Okay, then we're gonna add the depreciation for the current year of 2.66 million. So let me just put it in another color here. So I can highlight it to you. Okay, you're gonna take the opening balance of accumulated depreciation of the six million to that, you're going to add this 2.633 million, and you also need to minus the accumulated depreciation of the trucks that you sold, so that would be the 500,000, okay? So don't forget, you also need to minus accumulated depreciation on the disposed trucks. Okay, and that is uh, 500,000. Okay, and that's gonna give me 8133, okay. So just to repeat, how do I get this 8133? I'm gonna say, the six million at the beginning of the year, my opening balance plus the 2.633, and then I need to minus the 500,000. Okay. So I have a question, how do I get the 14 million for the vehicle? So I started off with my opening balance. I'm gonna just do it in another color here. My opening balance of the cost of my vehicles was 15 million. And then I sold the vehicles for 1 million. Those two trucks that I sold, they cost me 1 million. Okay, so this is my disposal. And that is how I got. The 14 million. Any questions?
Okay, so I'm going to repeat this part here I wrote to the orange. So the accumulated depreciation. Okay, how do I get the closing balance of accumulated depreciation? So this here at the bottom. I start off with my opening balance of accumulated depreciation, which is six million. And then I add depreciation for the year, which is the 2633. So I say six million plus 2633, and then I minus the 500,000. Okay, so my calculation is six million minus plus rather. 2633 minus the 500,000, which is accumulated depreciation of the asset that I sold. And that's going to give me 81333. Questions? That calculation is for accumulated depreciation closing balance. If I can, I find it. Why am I minus in the 500,000? That is the accumulated depreciation of the two trucks that I sold. Okay, remember that I sold trucks, those two trucks. When I calculated the accumulated depreciation, it was 500,000. That's why I minus it. We take out the trucks from our book, we're taking out both the costs as well as the accumulated depreciation. Okay. Um, okay, so now I'm just going to share the solution with you for those two columns. We're still going to come back to the other ones now. Yeah, okay, so the carrying value is that amount there that you just mentioned, 5866667. So you would take your 14 million minus the 8133. Okay. So there's my solution. Okay, so remember that we spoke about the journal entries already. There's my journal entry in payment, and then there's my journal entry for the disposal of the assets. Okay, and then there's my journal entry for the depreciation. So I saw that some student asked me about the calculation for depreciation the 10 months. So I'm just going to go to that calculation here. Yes, I will post the solution on your link. Okay. So the 10 months, okay, if I quickly draw my timeline, okay, is from, so my year end year is 30th of June 2016. I remember that I sold this asset on 30th of April. 2016, and the year obviously begins on the 1st of July 2015. So if you count from the 1st of July 2015, so it would be July 2015, August 2015, September 2015, September, okay, July, August, September, October, November, December. So all of that would be for 2015, that's six months. And then in 2016, it would be January, February, March, and April. So that's four months. So it's 10 months altogether. Okay, so from that date until that date, it is 10 months. Are you happy with the 10 months? Okay, so I want to show you the, actually the PPE notes. Okay, so we're going to come back to the other columns now. For now, we're just looking at the land and the vehicles. Okay, so you will see the land here. Yeah. There was the 30 million at the beginning of the year. Then we show, so I wanna show you the marks, where the marks are. 
you get a mark by showing the impairment and it must be a minus. So you can either show it as a minus or in brackets, whatever it is. And then you get a mark for putting in your closing balances, okay, and cal calculating your carrying value of 24.5 million, okay. For the vehicles, okay, you have your opening balances. Remember, this is given to you. That's why there's no marks for it. And then you're going to show your disposal. Remember what I said here? Yeah, the disposal must be at the carrying value. Okay, so the carrying value is 500,000. And then you're going to show your depreciation. So that's an easy mark which you're going to get. So please don't forget to include the depreciation, which is given to you. And then the closing balances we calculated together. The 14 million we said was our opening balance of 15 million minus the 1 million. And then the accumulated depreciation, taking our opening balance plus depreciation for the year and minus in the 500,000. Okay. So all of the workings are in the solution as well. So you can have a look at that. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the question. We now need to move on to the other two um, classes of assets. Okay. So the other two classes of assets are our warehouses and our fridges. Okay, so let's start with warehouses. Okay. Okay, so they give me the opening balances on the top, so you can have a look at that, and then they give me additional information. During the current financial year, a major refurbishment of warehouses was undertaken. The warehouses were not available for use for two months while the refurbishment was taking place. The refurbishment took place in November and December 2015, and the total cost came to six million. It was available for use on the first of January 2016. Okay, so my first question for you guys is what should you do in a situation like this here? Okay, the warehouses were not available for use for the two months of November and December. So what should we do in those two months? Should we depreciate those warehouses in those two months or not? Okay, so I want to share something else. Mm, so let's see if I can open it. So if I quickly just open up the slides for part two. Okay, while it's opening, so it might take a while. So I'm going to explain the concept. Um, okay, I'm not sure what slide number it is, but you'll see your slides. So if you look at the second part of BPE, they explain to you depreciation. They give you, there's a slide on when should we start depreciating the asset. And there's a slide which is uh, when should we stop depreciating an asset. And in that slide, it says that there's also a part which explains that when should you not stop depreciating an asset. So let me open it up. It's opening now. Uh, into a now. Okay, so I need to zoom out again. Okay, so this is what I'm speaking about. It says this slide here, so it's slide number nine. It says that depreciation does not stop if the asset is temporarily removed from use and undergoing repairs. Okay, so what is temporary? Temporary is if you're taking something out from use for a few months and then you're going to bring it back into use. So that is something that's temporary. It's not permanent. So do you think in our example here, the warehouse was permanently removed from use or temporarily removed from use? Do 
Okay, it was temporarily removed from use. Okay, therefore, okay, we should not stop depreciating that asset for those two months of November and December. Okay, I hope that makes sense to everyone. So please look at the information in the slides. In the slides, it says that if an asset is temporarily removed from use, we should not stop depreciating it. Okay. So this refurbishment is like an addition. Okay, so basically what happened was we added to the cost of an asset. So refurbishment, you can Google it if you don't understand what it means, is basically when we add on or we do an improvement or innovation or something like that to that warehouse. So that's what a refurbishment basically is. Okay, so it should be shown as an addition. But this year, what's important here is that you understand that this is a change in something. We change something. We add it on to an asset here. So it's a change in estimate. And how do you do a change in estimate? You need to always calculate the carrying value, okay? And then determine what is the remaining useful life, okay? So you will see in the calculations that this is treated as a change in estimate. The moment you change something, you add on to the cost, you do a refurbishment or you change the useful life or you do something, it is regarded as a change in estimate. So I'm just going to remind you quickly, when you do a change in estimate, okay, we said that there are certain things that you need to follow, okay. Um, so I'm going to show the solutions again just now, okay. We're just doing the question or this part of the question first and then we're going to go back to the solutions, okay. So with a change in estimate, remember that you need to calculate the carrying value of that asset firstly and then you will divide by the remaining useful life, okay? So the first thing that I want you guys to do, I'm gonna give you some time to do this, is to calculate the carrying value of these warehouses here. So when I say the carrying value, it is the carrying value of these warehouses before the refurbishment took place, okay? What is the carrying value of those assets? Remember, to calculate the carrying value, we need to know what is the cost and what is the accumulated depreciation? I'm going to give you some time to do that calculation and then we're going to do it together. So look at, draw your timeline. Look at how many months did we use these warehouses for, for each year and calculate the depreciation.
Okay, guys. So you will notice for the warehouse that we don't have a purchase date. So they didn't tell us when we bought this, these warehouses. The only information we have is next page that the warehouses are depreciated at 4% per annum on a straight line method, then there's no residual value. And then if we go back to the first page, we have the cost price of the warehouses. Okay. Which is 24 million. And the accumulated depreciation is 2.4 million. We know it's depreciated at 2.4 million. Uh, Oh, sorry, at 4% per annum. So if you quickly just do a simple calculation on your calculator, and if you say that 24 million, okay, times 4% is going to give you how much? 960,000. Okay, so that would be depreciation for one year. How much of depreciation do we have? We have 2.4 million. So if you take 960,000, and multiply it by two, that would be depreciation for two years, and that is 1.920, but we still have accumulated depreciation of 2.4 million. So therefore I use it for more than two years. Okay, did I use it for three years? Okay, if I take 960,000, which is depreciation for one year, and I multiply that by three, that's gonna give me 2.880 million, which is more than the accumulated depreciation I have. So basically, I use it for less than three years, but more than two years. Another way to quickly do the calculation is to say that what percentage does this accumulated depreciation represent? So if I take 2.4 million out of the 24 million, that is actually 10%. Okay. And if my depreciation rate is 4% per annum, I would have depreciated 4% in year one, 4% in year two, and 2% 2 in another year. Okay, so that means that there's depreciation here for two and a half years. Okay. I'm going to explain it again. I'm just going to open up a blank sheet and use it from there. Okay, so the cost of the warehouses is 24 million. Okay, and we know that accumulated depreciation, okay, so these are my opening balances, which is what I'm working with. It's given to me. The accumulated depreciation is 2.4 million. Okay. I know that I depreciate at 4% per year, okay, because that is also given to me, okay. So that means if I look at the opening balances, and the opening balances, remember, are at what date? At 30th of June 2015, so that's until the beginning of the year. Until that date, we know that this warehouses have been depreciated at 2.4 million. So what percentage is that? If I quickly do a simple math calculation, I will see that 2.4 million divided by 24 million. So if I take 2.4 million, and if I divide it by the cost, so if I take my accumulated depreciation divided by the cost, of 24 million, I will get 10%. So that's how much of the asset I already depreciated. I depreciated 10%. And if 4% is for each year, it would be 4% for one year, 4% for another year, that's 8%, and then 2% for the third year. So I use it actually for two and a half years. Okay, do you all follow me? So if I try and do that calculation, 
Okay, I would take my cost price of 2.4 million and I multiply it by 4%. Okay, in the first year, it's going to give me 960,000. In the second year, I'm going to do the same calculation. Okay, and then in the third year, I only used it for half the year, so I'll take the 2.4 million, multiply it by the 4%, and then I'm going to multiply it by six months over 12, because I know I only use the asset for two and a half years. And that's going to give me 480,000. Okay, if I add all of this together, it's going to give me accumulated depreciation of 2.4 million. Okay, so um, the question is, is it 24 million or 2.4 million? The cost of the asset is 24 million and the accumulated depreciation is 2.4 million. Okay. Any questions on this? Okay, so even though I don't have the purchase price, I know that I use this asset already for two and a half years. Okay, so therefore, um, the remaining useful life is what? Okay, I'm going to be back in one minute. I'm just going to get some water. So calculate or determine for me what is the remaining useful life of these warehouses.
Okay. Okay, so another way to do this calculation is basically to just try to convert the percentage into years. Okay. So what does 4% per annum represent? How many years that does it represent? Okay, so if I had to do a calculation quickly, and if I say 24 million, okay, um, and I multiply that by 4%, remember we said we get 960,000, okay? But I, if I also do the same calculation, Remember, you can either do a percentage or your useful life. If I take 24 million and I divide it by 25 years, I will also get 960,000. Okay, so how do I determine or how do I know that 4% um, represents 25 years. Okay, you can just do a math calculation. So if you say 1 divided by 4, it's going to give you 0 0.25. And if you multiply that by 100, it's 0. It's going to give you 25%. Okay, so if you want to convert a percentage into the number of years, okay, you will just take 1 divided by the percentage. So one divided by 4% is 25 years. Any questions? Okay. Okay, so that is the total useful life of this asset. It's 25 years. So that's how much I use the asset for in total. I already determined on the top here that I use the asset for how many years? I used it for two full years and one half year. So two and a half years. Okay. So if the total useful life is 25 years and if I use the asset for two and a half years so if I used it for two and a half years the remaining useful life would be 22.5 okay so I'm going to explain it again Okay, if you need to calculate, so if you're given a percentage and you want to calculate the number of years, you can do a simple calculation. You can say 1 divided by 4%, and that will give you the number of years. So if I'm depreciating at 4% per annum. So if I take 1 divided by 4%, it means that my total useful life is 25 years. Okay. And so that's my total useful life. I used this asset for two and a half years. Remember, because the accumulated depreciation was 2.4 million. So we did that calculation just now. Okay. Therefore, I have 22.5 years remaining. Okay. You can also do the calculation in months if you want to. That's also fine. So you can convert everything into months. That means that 25 years would have how many months? You would say 25 times 12, so it's 300 months altogether. You would have used the asset for 30 months. Okay, and then the remainder is what is left, okay? So you can either do it in months or you can work it out like how I just did using a fraction. That is also fine. So it's totally up to you. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Okay, so I'm going to quickly repeat the part where I, so we don't have a purchase date. Remember, we don't know when this asset was bought. We just tried to calculate how long did we use it for. So going back to the beginning, what information was given to me, we were given a cost of two, um, 24 million and accumulated depreciation of 2.4 million. So, and we were also given that depreciation is 4% on the straight line method. So if you take 24 million times 4%, 
is equal to 960,000 for one year. And I need to get to an accumulated depreciation of 2.4 million. So that means I depreciated 960, 960, and also 480, and that's how I got to 2.4 million. So that would be one full year, two full years, and one half a year. That's how I got to accumulated depreciation of 2.4 million. Okay, so we don't know the purchase date, it wasn't given, but we still can calculate what is the remaining useful life, okay? Okay, so going back to what we were trying to calculate, we always said that we need to take our carrying value of this asset here, okay? And we need to divide it by the remaining useful life, okay? So you're gonna take the carrying value, we already all worked it out together. We said that Okay, I'm just going to get an, another sheet here, so I'm not going to confuse you guys, but, and I don't have place, but I hope you got this part here. Let me just delete everything. Okay, so we know that our opening, uh, the getting value at the beginning of the year okay, is given to us. So at the beginning of the year, we had a cost of 24 million. Okay, and then we had accumulated depreciation of 2.4 million. Okay, and that gave me a carrying value at the beginning of the year. Of 21 0.6 million. Okay, then if I go back to the question, remember that the information said that I used the asset for six months before any um, refurbishment happened. So I need to do depreciation for six months before anything happened. So depreciation for six months would be equal to the cost 24 million. Okay, times 4%, and because it's six months in the year before any refurbishment happened, I'm gonna multiply by six over 12. And that will give you 480,000. Okay, so my new carrying value, okay, is going to be now the 21.6 million, before, so I'm working out now my carrying value before um, before the refurbishment. Okay, it's gonna be that 21.6 million, which comes from your old carrying value minus the 480,000. Okay, which is from here. Okay, so that will give me my new carrying value, which is gonna be 21120. Okay, that is the carrying value before the refurbishment. Okay, then I'm gonna add refurbishment cost. Okay, and remember that it said it costed me six million to do this refurbishment. So I'm gonna add the six million here. Okay, sorry, it's looking so untidy now. 
So it's plus the six million. So let me get a new sheet here. Okay, so okay, so for that, okay, my getting value at the beginning of the year. I'm not gonna do all the calculations again, I'm just gonna write out what I said. So my getting value at the beginning of the year was 21.6 million. That's given to me. Okay. 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 Then I calculated depreciation for the current year before the refurbishment for six months, and that was 480,000. Okay, and then my carrying value before the refurbishment is now going to be the difference between these two amounts here. So the 21.6 million minus the 480,000, and that's 21.120. Oh. Okay. Okay, then I'm going to add my refurbishment costs, which was six million. So you add your refurbishment costs of six million, and that's going to give you your new cost. If I add those two together, Correct, okay, so you get 27, one, two, oh. Okay, so now this is my new carrying value of my asset, and I now need to depreciate that over my remaining useful life, which I already calculated earlier, as 22.5 years, okay? Or if you calculate it in months, it's also fine, okay? And that will give you your depreciation of whatever amount it is. But remember that you must also apportion it for six months because we already depreciated before the refurbishment for six months. And now the refurbishment, we now need to depreciate for six months. Okay, so if I do that calculation, you should get... Six one six three six four. Okay, I'm just rounding off. Okay, any questions? Oh, sorry, sorry, guys. Okay, so it's not 22.5 anymore. Okay, so remember that we use it for the six months here. Okay, so before the refurbishment, so we had 22.5 before the current year. Then remember, we depreciated here for six months here. Okay, and therefore we need to minus the six months here. Okay, so we actually have 22 years left. Okay, because the six months we depreciated already there on the top. So we have 22 years left, okay? Okay, so thank you so much, Lee Pekong, for picking that up. Okay, so that's how I get to that amount there. Okay, so it's six months before the refurbishment and six months after the refurbishment. Okay, so this warehouse calculation is quite complicated. You will ever look at the solution. You can see the full workings there as well. Okay, um, and just look at it again and see, make sure you understand it, but just try and do it. So it may not be that you'll get 100% for the calculation, but as long as we can follow your thought process and you understand that what you need to do, you will get the some of the marks and you will pass the question, okay? So I will put up the solution just now.
Um, I just want to quickly, because we're running out of time, so I want to go to the last part of it, and then we're going to go to the solution. So I want to go back to the question. Okay, and then... The part that we didn't do was fridges. Okay, so the fridges are quite easy. Okay, so for the fridges, you will see that fridges to the value of 500,000 were purchased on the 1st of April 2016, and depreciation on fridges is 10% on the diminution value. Okay, so I have some questions here. It's for 2016, yes. So the depreciation that we calculated is for the year 2016, okay. Okay, so the 616364 is for the six months, which is after the refurbishment. And then remember, we need to add the 480,000, which is the depreciation for before the refurbishment. So the total depreciation is going to be 1096364. Okay, so coming back to the question with fridges. Okay, so the only thing that happened to, with fridges for the year was that we bought fridges on the 1st of April 2016, and it's depreciated at 10% per annum. So we're going to quickly draw a timeline for the fridges. Remember, my year end is June 2016. The 1st of July 2015 is when my year begins. Okay, and I bought the fridges here on the April. Okay, I have a question. You can left your, you can speak. Ma'am, it's about the four hundred and eighty thousand that we just subtracted yeah. um, from the twenty one six hundred thousand. Yes. You're saying it's for the six months um, remaining after the refurbishment, right? Before the refurbishment, so the four hundred and eighty thousand was the six months before the refurbishment. Yes, the six months. So remember, twenty sixteen. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Hello. Hello, ma'am. Yes. So you can. So let me yes, just explain this. Sorry, I didn't hear Okay. So what I'm saying is that 480,000 is the six months before the refurbishment. And then the other amount we calculated, the 616364, is after the refurbishment. Uh, Ma'am, I have a bit of confusion regarding that because okay. when we initially calculated the carrying value, at the beginning yeah. of the year. Remember, we, we had it on the information that is given that the cost is yeah. 24 million and yeah. um, the accumulation depreciation at that point was 2.4 million. Yes. And 2.4 million was the depreciation for two years and six months that yes. we have had the, um, the warehouse for already. So isn't the 480,000 yeah. for the half year in that two year, six months before the refurbishment? The refurbishment yes. And we yeah. now so basically, the time and no, no. So you're getting confused with the with the dates. Just look at it this way. So before the beginning, before this year began, at the beginning of this year. So just mute your mic for one minute. Okay, so I'm saying that if we look at the beginning of this year for the 1st of June, 
of July 2015, the balances were given, given to us. So that 2.4 million accumulated depreciation, that represents depreciation for two and a half years. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Okay, so now we need to work out depreciation for the current year. In the current year, okay, which ends 30th of June 2016, what happened was that for the first six months, we're gonna work out the depreciation before the refurbishment happened. And for the six months, we're gonna work it out after the refurbishment. So now we're working out again depreciation for six months and that's for in the year 2016. So that has nothing to do with the two and a half years. This is in addition to that um, two and a half years. So if I look at before the refurbishment, in prior years, I used the asset for two and a half years. In the current year, I use it for another half a year. So that means I would have used the asset for a full three years before the refurbishment. So that means the remaining useful life is actually now 22 um, years. Does that make sense? Okay, all right. And the next question you can ask now. Maratella. Okay, so while we're waiting for Maratella to talk, just check if your mic is not on mute. Um, I'm just gonna continue with the fridges. So like I was saying for the fridges, we purchased it on the 1st of April, 2016. Liam, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, are we not treating 6 million as additions? Sorry, what did you say? Say that again. 6 million. Are we not treating it as additions? The refurbishment, the 6 million. Yes, we are. So are we not going to calculate it using a remaining useful life, like six million uh, divided by two, six, four, then multiply it by six months, six months from one January to end of a country yeah. period. Yes, you then can do it like that. Then it will give us a, like it will give us a depreciation for, for six million. And then the old depreciation, are we not going to say 24 million multiplied by 4% or 24 million divided by 25, if I'm not mistaken? Then we add mm. the two the depreciation expense or the depreciation during the year. Yeah, so it's correct what you're saying, but you're forgetting about one part. So remember that before the refurbishment, you're going to say the 24 million. Um, multiplied by your 4% or divided by 25 years and then multiply by 6 over 12. So the, before the refurbishment, you're going to get depreciation of 480. Then after the refurbishment, remember, you need to do this two parts. You need to add the addition part of 6 million and you need to also depreciate the warehouses that were already there, so the old warehouses. Okay, so you not you are by just depreciating the 6 million, you're not taking also into account the old warehouses. So that the current value of the old warehouses, which we calculated was 21.120 million. So you can do the calculation separately, or you could do it in one calculation. You'll still get the marks for it, and you'll still get the same answer. Okay, so you can do it separately as well, the 6 million separately, and then the old um, warehouses separately as well. Okay, ma'am, understood. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, so in the solution, you will see um, uh, it will be explained there as well. And if you're still struggling with it, you're more than welcome to send an email or you can even um, ask one of the tutors as well. They can assist you. Okay, so for the fridges, okay, we're saying that um, the, the fridges that we bought is only used for three months of the year. So remember that when we're doing depreciation for it, we're only going to depreciate it for the three months. Okay, so that's the only thing you need to look at for the fridges. So I'm gonna quickly open up the solution. We're not gonna have time to go through it in detail. Um, 
but I'm gonna scan through the parts which I think are important and highlight for you what is important. Okay, so this part was the journals and then here we come to the PPE notes. Okay, so let's start by looking at the warehouses. Okay, so remember the opening balances are given to you and then we show the addition. So the question was asked now, we're not gonna show the refurbishments as an addition. Yes, we will. So you will add the 6 million there. Okay, that was the refurbishment. Okay, then your depreciation calculation. So this is the complicated calculation which we just did now together. If I go to the workings, Okay, you will see this is the calculation here. So before the refurbishment for the year 2016, the depreciate for six months. Yes. Yes, I'm listening. So we can carry on. Okay. Um, someone else is the end up, you can ask. Okay, and then this calculation is now the depreciation after the refurbishment. So you will see here in the solution, they worked it out using months, okay? So you can either work it out using months or in years, okay? So this 264 months actually represents um, 22 years, okay? So they give you a nice explanation here. They say before the refurbishment, we used the asset for two and a half years. And then we use the asset for another six months in the current year. So therefore there's now 22 years left, okay. Okay, then if I go back to the question, um, the cost is now gonna be increased. It's gonna be the 24 million plus the six million and the accumulated depreciation. We're just gonna add the depreciation at the beginning of the year to the current year depreciation. If I look at the fridges, so I put in my opening balances, I show my additions for the year, the 500,000, and then my depreciation calculation for the fridges. It's very simple. The only thing is that don't forget to depreciate the fridges that you bought. So the new fridges, it was the 500,000 times 10% times three over 12. And then the old fridges will just be the carrying value and then you multiply it by 10% because remember, here we are using the diminishing balance method. So you need to take your cost minus your accumulated depreciation. Okay, um, Okay. so we have discussed the tutorial times and um, I think that we have decided to now split the tutorial into two sessions, one morning session and one afternoon session. So, um, but the tutors will probably give you more details with that. So we have spoken to them and there will be two opportunities to, end a to attend a tutorial. I think one is in the morning session and one is the afternoon session, but you will get, um, more information about that shortly. Okay, so we have heard you guys and we will um, give you another chance to, end, to attend the tutorial. I know that it can be tiring and overwhelming to have so many questions in a day. Um, so we have discussed it this week. Hopefully it will be implemented next week. We just um, sorting out the logistics and stuff like that, but I'm not too sure if the tutors have sorted all of that out um, yet but you will receive information from them soon, okay? So hopefully um, it's implemented very soon. I can't give you an exact date, but it will be really soon. Okay, so thank you guys for bearing with me. Sorry that the class ran over time. It's, it was quite a, um, a complicated question, especially when it came to the warehouses and stuff like that. And I wanted to make sure that you understand the concepts. It is a bit difficult to explain it online um, and but um, we have to work with what we have, unfortunately. So 
please go through the solution again. Make sure you understand the calculation. And if you don't, please come back to us or ask anyone, and we will definitely try and explain to you and assist you in that regard. Okay. Are there any more questions before we end? Okay, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks, guys. Bye.